This is the Grow My Clinic podcast by Clinic Mastery, where we help you deliver amazing client experiences to grow your clinic. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Grow My Clinic podcast. This is going to be a cracker today. My name is Jack O'Brien. I'm your host and co-hosting with me in the pilot seat is Ben Lynch. How are you, Ben? I'm doing super well, Jack. Uh, Thrilled to be on another podcast. Got my coffee here, so I'm ready. Great. I love it. I love it. Um, So what we want to talk about today, Ben, and and this will be a different uh, fireside chat, if you will, um, around... Uh, around personal mastery, essentially, how to deal with all the pressures that life, that clinic ownership throws at you. Uh, what we've noticed is that as we deal with hundreds and hundreds of clinic owners, is that there's an ebb and a flow to this life of business ownership, um, it, which has actually been a really interesting contrast to the life of a clinician, right? Mm. A clinician has a diary. Like, you've got one job <laughs> as yes. a therapist. You know, you're like, you've got your diary, your list of patients, and you just see patients ideally, consistently, predictably, on the half hour, every half hour. It's fairly routine. Contrast that with the life of a business owner where you'll go through patches of high workload and you're going to have to hustle and grind or flow. Actually, that's an interesting one around grinding versus flowing. But, uh, you know, you might have to work some big 14, 16-hour days versus the times when you can take a little bit easy. And like myself, uh, my clinic today, I don't need to be there. Once we finish this recording, I'm going to play nine holes of golf. Nice. Right? So, so it just ebbs and flows. So, Ben, can you talk to um, talk to clinic owners who maybe struggle with... It flowing too much and not enough ebbs when it's so flat out so consistently. What uh, what common themes, common challenges do you see in clinic owners that are flat out all the time? I think there are many different ways that we could talk about this and it'll all boil down to structure. Jack, I think at the end of the day, structure in your diary. I think once you are in the thick of it and sometimes you can be in a really good zone of flow and you're just crushing it on all fronts however there are times where maybe the word grinding comes to mind a little (laughs) easier where you are just persisting because you have to but there's Uh not enough structure and protection of your time and your space, okay. your mental okay. space, your physical space, to be able to recollect yourself and um, approach it with a, a better, I guess, a better version of you, really. Okay. All right. So, so can you push into there that that structure and uh, saying yes versus saying no to things? Right. How do how do clinic owners deal with the barrage of of options and things to do? Mm. One of the big things we always talk about, Jack, you know this, is we talk about an outcome mindset. What I find is that so many clinic owners, they're uh, romantic or they're so obsessed by the mechanics of doing stuff Mm -hmm. and forget, they, they, they confuse activity with productivity. And okay. they're, they're doing a lot of things, but they're not incredibly productive because they don't have a clear enough outcome in mind. And so the best clinic owners I've found, they're obsessed and they don't change their standards about their outcomes, as in mm-hmm. they've got a result in mind. And they don't necessarily care too much about how they get that result, provided that it's, uh, you know... Um, not abusing anyone else or, you know, it's done in a tasteful way. Like, let sure. me say that. Sure. They, but they're not so caught up in, okay, it only has to be this way. So mm-hmm. often talk to someone and they'll say, you know, I want to do this particular strategy or this particular method for team or marketing or whatever it is. And they're so obsessed by the method or the mm-hmm. way to achieve the outcome sure. and not the outcome itself. And so... They, whenever there's any challenges or obstacles, they're often fighting against the resistance because they're stuck on mm-hmm. their way rather mm-hmm. than being obsessed about the outcome where there could be a much easier way. It takes mm-hmm. less time, less stress, <laughs> less pressure. So I've found clinic owners who are able to better deal with those challenges as you said, Jack, it ebbs and flows. We're not here to tell you that it's all roses and butterflies. Like There are hard days in business. Uh-huh. Um, but the more you're clear about the outcome, I think the more resourceful you are in finding the answers or the ways when those obstacles come up. 
Sure. I guess what you're saying, and, and I'll often say this, um, my particular area of expertise within Clinic Mastery is client acquisition and marketing. The truth is I love Facebook marketing, Google AdWords and partnerships and all the strategies, but the truth is I'm agnostic around the strategies as long as we achieve the outcome. And when it comes to, for instance, marketing, the outcome is being able to help more people, get in front of more eyeballs to help more people. And so I actually don't mind whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or LinkedIn or Google. It, it's, it doesn't matter. You're agnostic about that stuff as long as you get the outcome. Ben, I wanted to touch on a couple of other things there. You mentioned um, saying no to certain things, protecting your time and structuring the diary. Um, you know, Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, said what we say yes to determines what we say no to, mm-hmm. right? And so somehow often do we see clinic owners say yes to average, mm-hmm. uh, say yes to the mundane at the expense of the extraordinary. Mm. Uh, we, we say yes to good at the expense of great. Mm. Uh, so as clinic owners, we need to be really protective and oftentimes say no more often than we say yes. Would you agree? Oh, for sure, Jack. Absolutely. And again, that just goes back to the result or outcome mindset. And I'm going to borrow a a phrase and a term here from a guy called Tony Robbins, who I think articulated it really well, was he uses a method called RPM, uh, which is like RPM in a car, the talk, how, right. how far something can go, right? Sure. And it stands for result, purpose, and then massive action. So these are his words, but the result, why, what, what are we after? The purpose, why are we after that? Making sure that you, you're constantly aware of what it will mean. What's the outcome going to mean for you, uh, your team, your clients, etc.? And then what's the massive action? So I found that a really good trigger for myself if I ever feel like I'm getting into the small things mm-hmm. and I catch myself and I go, hold on, these really aren't valuable activities to be doing. And then I just quickly run through RPM. What's the result? What? Why am I doing it? And what's the massive action? So Jack, when you say yes and no to things, mm-hmm. often you got to go, okay, is this really going to help or is it going to help substantially move us in the direction of getting our result? So mm-hmm. I think that's probably a, an additional filter that I would use, Jack, in the yes or no. Yes, it's going to help. Is it the best way to do it though? in order to achieve that result. Mm, Okay. So we're talking about saying yes and no through that filter of RPM, keeping your outcome in mind. And often what I would speak to keeping that outcome front of mind is it's imperative as a clinic owner that you carve out time somehow to get out of the day-to-day, get out of the mundane and get in a place where you can think clearly and strategically. There's a number of different ways, and, and it'll work for different people. Some like to go to professional, uh, personal development uh, workshops, like a Tony Robbins. Uh, a clinic mastery workshop is fantastic if we can snack, uh, sneak a plug in there. That, that's mm. a shameless plug. Our events are unbelievable for getting people clarity and articulation around vision. But it might just be as simple as going for a walk on the beach or climbing a mountain with a notebook and a pen and getting really clear on your outcome so that mm. you're not comparing to other people, but you know why it is you do what you do. And we're going to cover a comparison on another issue, on another episode. Yeah. I want to touch really quickly on that hustle and grind versus flow. Mm. Um, and they're two sides to the same coin, Ben. Something that I'm uh, learning currently is we so often hear you've got to grind and you've got to push and you've got to hustle, which is true. I don't think myself or yourself would refute that at all. There are times... Let's be honest, as a business owner, you need to do a lot of boring things regularly, repetitively, and consistently, and you've got to grind, right? For sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you've got to do the basics every day. Right. It's a matter of hitting those. We refer to them as jump shots inside our business academy every day, every week, every month. But I also want to speak to flow because if we're just grinding and making life difficult for ourselves consistently without a breather, we're going to get burnt out and tired. And and so what you need to do as a clinic owner is find a place where you can become self-aware enough that you can have space to work on the important things, Mm -hmm. Uh, the things that are non-urgent but are important uh, where you can get flow. So for me, uh, what's been really helpful for me is doing an audit of my time and energy. And so I can do what I'm best at when I'm at my best. 
So for me, it's carving out time in the mornings because uh, I'm a morning person. I don't work very well with a full belly of you know, <laughs> spaghetti and red wine. Uh, so the mornings work really well for me. Uh, carving out time where my phone is on do not disturb, Slack is closed down, emails are closed down, and I'm working in flow. I'm being creative. I've got daylight shining in, so the sun's on me. I want to be in a place where I can flow and be creative. Now, that might be on the same day where I'm working a 14-hour day and hustling out, cleaning my inbox back to zero and doing all the little things. There's got to be a balance of grind and flow. What would you say to that? Yeah, absolutely, Jack. I think the the grind bit is it's often doing the things that you know you have to, they're necessary, and they're the basics, they're often the fundamentals. They're not incredibly sexy work, but it's got to be done. You've right. got to do it. And uh, I don't think any form of greatness comes about by having a comfortable, easy life. Like right. you've got to, at times, you've got to put in the hard yards. And I don't doubt our listeners are putting in the hard yards, but right. I think the point that you touched on is finding that space, that trigger for you that allows you to get more into that state of flow, uh, whether it's meditating or yoga or on the beach or in a different environment, whatever it is, again, that's not being romantic to any particular strategy. The result is getting into flow, Mm -hmm. whatever that Uh is. Right. Um, So for me, that's going to a cafe every morning, hitting my reset button and, you know, preparing for the day and getting clarity. So whatever it is, You've got to find that space in the diary and protect it. So many clinic owners we find, you know, they put it in a diary and then they don't tell their admin mm-hmm. or whoever and they book clients in there and then oh, three, four weeks goes by and they haven't had this reset and they're like, I'm burning out. So you really have to protect your time. You can't, you can't make it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is the number one priority to give yourself the, the mental and physical space. Love it. So to recap, we're talking about getting clear on your ideal outcome, saying yes or no to the right things according to your RPM, and then juggling that tension of hustle and grind versus flow. There are a couple of quick tips for you as a listener to handle the pressures of being a clinic owner, where no one should be able to sugarcoat it and say that it's easy, but it is worth it. I know for us here at Clinic Mastery, what we do, we're so passionate about it, and the clinic owners that we speak with every single day inside our business academy and soon to be our Grow My Clinic membership, stay tuned for that. When we're talking with clinic owners and they're clear on their why and stick to these strategies, they're able to deal all with all the challenges that come at them and not just survive, but thrive. So we hope that's been helpful for you as a Grow My Clinic podcast listener. We really appreciate your earbuds. So uh, thank you so much. Just thank you. Uh, We know some people have been reviewing us on iTunes and Stitcher and all the other places. Thank you for that. We are so incredibly grateful. But more than that, if you are someone who will never leave us a review, that's okay too. We really appreciate you listening to us and and trusting us uh, because really at the end of the day, our mission is to help create more clinics that deliver amazing client experiences and that are thriving for business owners. Ben, thank you for joining us. That is another episode in the can. You can check out all the show notes over at clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast and we look forward to bringing you another episode really soon. This is the Grow My Clinic podcast by Clinic Mastery, where we help you deliver amazing client experiences to grow your clinic.